Hello and welcome in this uh, second video, second video about chapter 10, coordination in the supply chain. In the first video we crossed um, the supply chain coordination itself, why it is important and what the WIP effect is. In this second uh, video we will cross the obstacles that you as a supply chain manager might encounter on your uh, journey towards uh, supply chain coordination. Uh, supply chain coordination itself is important as you as a, a supply chain manager want to increase the uh, total profitability within the whole supply chain. Um, when you embark on that uh, journey there are uh, five possible um, uh, 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 obstacles you might encounter. Those are incentive obstacles, information processing obstacles, operational obstacles, pricing obstacles, and last but not least, the behavioral, the behavioral side of the, uh, of the equation. Uh, when we focus on the first incentive obstacles, uh, those incur when um, uh, those um, incentives and the actions they want to incur with um, their personnel of war within that stage is only focused on that stage itself. So for example, when you as a manager um, in, in, uh, implement Salesforce incentives, so you want to um, uh, increase the sales of your phase within the uh, supply chain itself, it might very well be that that supply that uh, you in your phase will have extra um, um, uh, uh, Will, ex will earn extra revenue. But that could imply that the total um, profit within the supply chain, for example you are a distributor, that the profit from the retailer point of view or from the distributor point of view will uh, decrease. So when you implement Salesforce uh, incentives, do so always, um, uh, always uh, thinking about the whole supply chain itself. Uh, the same is also for uh, production incentives. When you want to um, increase the production, you can do so through production incentives. But production incentives might incur higher inventory costs and, um, and this might turn out in higher availability or uh, too high um, uh, availability of your products. So incentives are um, an important uh, lever but you have to uh, think about them very carefully and you as a supply chain manager are not only responsible for the profit of your um, of your company you are responsible of, for the profit of the whole supply chain the second one is uh, information processing obstacles information processing obstacles uh, are there when demand information is distorted as it moves between different stages of the supply chain, leading to increased variability in orders within the supply chain. This, in part, is the bull whip effect. If you want to know more about the bull whip effect, please uh, recall uh, video 1 about uh, chapter 10 coordination in the supply chain and you are focusing more on uh, customer orders and not on customer demand. Uh, recall chapter 7 where we crossed uh, demand 
and demand forecasting, we always forecast it from the point of view of the customer itself. We never ever forecast it for the distributor, for the manufacturer, for the supplier. So please take this into account. And this all leads, um, tends to lead to a uh, lack of information sharing. Um, the third obstacle that you might encounter are operational obstacles. Operational obstacles are uh, three different um, uh, three different points. And, and, um, and they tend to come from um, the purchase uh, point of view. When you are ordering and you are ordering in large lots, um, that tends to increase the, uh, the variability of um, the stage before your stage. The same is with uh, large replenishment re uh, lead times. For example, when the lead time of for replenishment is uh, a month or two months or even more, then uh, the, uh, the variability through the supply chain itself will increase. The last one is uh, rationing and shortage gaming. When you want to ration your um, your inventory um, for and you as you in your stage can have uh, very good reasons to do so, but when you do not um, when you do not learn uh, in the supply chain itself from it, then the total profitability in your supply chain will decrease so please uh, mention that when you are um, trying to increase your supply chain coordination this all um, comes to this um, uh, to this graph here you see the demand the demand is relatively stable but as the demand is relatively stable and the uh, lead times in the, um, for, uh, for your purchase orders are relatively high, you uh, buy for one, two, three, four weeks in at once. That, uh, so that means that you have to purchase for one, two, three, four, five weeks. Um, and this tends to increase the um, uh, and as the uh, replenishment time, the lead time increases, it also increases the uh, variability and it decreases the agility of your supply chain itself. Um, the fourth obstacle you might encounter are pricing obstacles. When you as an, um, you in a phase um, purchase based up on quantity uh, based upon uh, quantity and maybe even based upon uh, quantity discounts you buy more as is uh, necessary itself, but you got reasons to do so. Um, as you, and as you do, the um, um, and as you do, you send a message to to the earlier stage that you need that um, uh, that you need the goods and they do not know if they need the goods because of the demand or because of a potential gaming and when you do so that comes uh, very nice 
into, uh, into a graph in this slide. This slide will um, tell us the retailer sales, the retailer uh, sales um, increase through the um, uh, increase through the weeks, and they tend to increase because of um, uh, price discounts from the retailer point of view, and. Um, and the manufacturer shipments itself are also increased. And they are increased in such a way that in the weeks after the pricing, um, after the pricing incentive from the retailer, uh, they do not purchase anything at all. But there is still a demand and that demand is covered by inventory. Inventory costs money. So this is a perfect example of what happens when you do not have a coordination in action and in, uh, and in information. Because here this, this gap is filled by, um, uh, by inventory and as inventory costs money the total um, uh, profitability within the supply chain tends to decrease. Last one are the behavioral obstacles. Behavioral obstacles are um, are important obstacles to uh, to come by, as all other obstacles are in rules, regulations, procedures. These obstacles are more into the, uh, more into the people, uh, more from the people point of view. The first one, um, each stage of the supply chain views its actions locally, recap the sales or production incentives, and is unable to see the impacts of its actions on the other stages. And, um, also an important one is the fourth one. No stage of the supply chain learns from its actions over time. So the failures they make will decrease the uh, supply chain profitability and they will not learn from it. And that's even worse. Uh, these five uh, obstacles are the uh, obstacles you might encounter on your journey to uh, supply chain coordination in information and in actions. In the uh, next video we will cover the levers you as a manager have to, um, uh, to, um, to increase the coordination in the supply chain.